Welcome to the film look. Today we're going to talk about camera sliders. When they're great, when they're crap, how to use them, and if you should buy one. Over the last few years, the camera slider has become a staple in the freelancers kit after their camera and tripod. They have become relatively cheap and they offer more advanced and cooler looking shots to your project, which is great. The problem is, now that everyone has one, they are really being overused. In a similar way to getting your first fast lens and shooting absolutely everything in f1.8, when you get your hands on a camera slider, pretty much everything you shoot runs up and down this thing. I was certainly guilty of this in the past. Here at the Film Look, we use sliders for two different types of production, short films and client videos. Let's first of all talk about using sliders for short films. You can utilize sliders in your films in a few different ways. To reveal something, sliders are great as movement into a new scene or to reveal objects in an interesting way. They provide a really smooth and stable lateral movement which makes your shots look more cinematic. The slider is also great to add tension to a shot. A slow crawl on someone's face can add instant production value to your film with very little extra setup. When using a slider for short films, less is more. If an audience member notices you used a slider, then you've used it wrong. Immersion is key to good filmmaking. And if I'm being sucked out of the film because my brain just went, oh cool, slider shot, then it's been used incorrectly. Demonstrating your sweet kit to an audience instead of trying to just tell an immersive story can really give your film the amateur look. Welcome to the amateur look. Today we're going to spend money on crap we don't need to make our projects look even worse. For side on lateral movements you want to create depth between the foreground and the background if you want to create a parallax. What's a parallax you say? Well you know when you're sitting on a train and you look out of the window and notice the hills in the background barely move while the trees closer to you keep zooming past? That difference in perceived movement and speed is what's called a parallax. Without depth, as in objects in the foreground and background, a parallax can't exist. So adding a slider movement to a wide establishing shot without something to separate the background and foreground is pointless. In cases like this, shoot something in the foreground to slide from or just stick to a pan and tilt, which can be just as cinematic. Basically, what I'm saying is, there needs to be a reason to use it. For short films, every shot needs motivation. If you're adding a slider movement to your shot just because it's cool and for no other reason, just stick to the tripod. Everything you choose must add something to your storytelling. On the other hand, client work is a little bit different. Since sliders are easy to set up, fairly non-intrusive, and add so much production value to your shots, well, the perfect for client work. Clients love slider shots because it makes everything look silky and really sexy. It adds instant quality to production value to client projects without stretching the budget to undesirable heights. The same rules apply for slider shots on client projects though. There needs to be a motivation of movement. But it's a little less strict. The camera slider isn't there to replace your tripod. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Should you buy a camera slider? Yeah, they're pretty cool. Thanks for watching. So this is our first time presenting in front of the camera. If you really didn't like it, leave a comment below and we'll make sure we just stick to voiceovers. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, all linked below. And we'd just like to say thank you very much for all the wave of new subscribers coming in. We hope you like the episodes to come. We'll see you next week. How's that? Is that good?